Um, but today uh, we're doing our quiz on 10, one, 10 2, and 11, 1. And then we're going to you know cover chapters chart that we did? 11, 2. What is the strategy for this chat? No, it's, it's actually put the page. Uh, it's this one right here. And then there's, and then uh, there's three things that I meant to mention that come into the break, at the end of break. Uh, you know that little, um, today, you know right here. Sorry, let me point to it. Today, we have Connect Math 10.1 due. And then Tuesday, you have 10 to do, and also 11 one. Those are a little bit shorter. They shouldn't take you more than half an hour each to do. Um, and then lab 10 is also due on Tuesday. You have to do lab 10 in Excel, because uh, Google Sheets won't do the stuff you need to do. And then Thursday, you have Connect Math 11.2 due a week from today. And then the Sunday after that, you have your last one due 11.3. So that's due on the Sunday before your final. File is in two weeks. And we got Tuesday, there's no homework that following Tuesday, we can just study? Right. Okay, cool. Not yes. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to have like the class thing again? So I think what I'm going to do is um, that Tuesday before the final, I think I'll hold a review session in here because there's no classes going on, there's no finals going on in here. Or so sure. I'll probably do it like 5.30 to 7, and then maybe I'll do my 7 o'clock, 7.30 class from like 7 to 8.30. So you can attend either or both if you want. Yeah. Um, Final is going to do about 35% on chapters 11, 10, and 11. And then the rest of it will be, you know, exam one material, exam two material, and exam three material. All right. So here is your, oops, did I not do that yet? So it's not that. Here is your um, study guide for the final. Those problems. So those problems from study guide exam one. Um, there's two twenty ones on exam one, so I mean the first one is what I mean. This is also on Canvas under study guide, exam study guides. Uh, there's a there's a file that says something about problems to study for final or something like that, and that's this right here. Um, the study guide for exam four is in the back, so you should know all of that stuff. Good. Lab 10, are there any questions on lab 10, which is due on Tuesday? No? You can turn it in late for full credit the following Thursday. Uh, <laughs> oh, also, um, math jam. Tell your friends to take math jam if they're taking statistics next semester. Um, it's, it's a really good way to kind of help you, or if you happen to fall in that spot of needing to retake it, it's a really good way of refreshing yourself and getting ready for um, statistics. So there's a map jam for statistics, there's one for trig, and there's one for um, college algebra, there's one for calculus, business calc, stuff like that, um, and, the, and also the regular algebra. So encourage people to, if you have friends who are taking math next semester, encourage them to take math jam. It's free. And they feed you as well. Um, speaking of feeding, um, Prep to Pass is next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, from 6.30 to 9 in the tutorial centers right around the corner. Uh, yeah, because I edited it, I edited the days and not the month, so it's December. Sorry. Um, and they have all sorts of different topics there. And they provide food. Okay, so after class, go there and study after class on Tuesday and get some free pizza and drinks and study. All right, so let's talk about regression. So, um, Martin, are we going to read it first? Re regression? Okay, 10.3 uh, regression. Uh, the regression line, the line of best fit, or at least square line, the least straight line that the quote unquote best fits hey, the scatter plot of the data. Hey. Exactly, that's our line. So it's not even me that's correcting you guys. You guys shut the heck up. Thank you. That's on key. Great. Dana, go ahead and read. Regression line. This line, this line is used to predict the values of y for a given x. Only used when there is a correlation slash relationship. And then when you reject h naught. Keep going. When r is not significantly different from 0, the best predictor of y is the mean of the data values of y. If not a line, use the average. Y. All right, so use y bar when you do not reject 
page 9. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to be a little bit better about getting people to not talk because, like I said, you guys are all paying for this class, so it's not really fair to you if you can't hear or you can't focus um, because other people are talking. So um, just, you know, be respectful of other people. They're, they're paying money to be here. All right. So again, our regression line, y prime equals a plus bx. x is our, our independent variable, right, the one you can control. Um, y is your dependent variable. Um, and how do you find a and b? You can just use your TI calculator and reg, a Lin-Reg t-test to find a and b. It gives you everything. It gives you the formula at top, and then it gives you your a and your b. So it makes it really straightforward for you. Go ahead, Explanations, your curious predictions. Use the regression uh, equation for pre predictions only if the linear correlation and coefficient R indicates that there is a linear correlation between the two variables and if the graph of the regression line on the scatter plot confirms that the, curve, the regression line fits the point reasonably really well. Mm -hmm. If your data is not correlated, R is close to zero, so no relationship. The best predicted value of a variable is the sample mean. Right. So if it's not correlated, then use the sample mean. Make sense? So again, this is if if there is a linear correlation and that scatter plot confirms that that the that it fits pretty well. Um, and how do you get a scatter plot? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute actually. Um, I'm gonna jump around here a little bit. So the first part of that is if the data is correlated. So in other words, if you reject H naught, then it is a line. Is a line. Then you use y equals a plus dx, right? Pretty straightforward. But if you do not reject H naught, then it is not a line. So then to predict y, you would just use y bar, the mean. To predict x, you would just use x bar. In other words, um, are test scores correlated to your shoe size? No. no. So what the best predictor of someone who has a four, size 4 shoe, best predictor of how well they did in the test, my best guess would be the average, the class average for the test. Does that make sense? Your best predictor is the mean. Also, if I wanted to like predict, well, someone who got a 67% of the test, what's my best guess for their shoe size? The average shoe, shoe size. The X bar. Make sense? Totally recovered from the concussion. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> right. um, and then, like Martin mentioned, um, as Anne's Combs or Quartet, if you kind of graph it and the line, you can kind of see whether the line sort of matches up or not. You can see this one is kind of what you expect. This one, you're actually looking at a parabola, not a line, so you really shouldn't use it. And this one, you've got this little outlier there that kind of messes up what the line really should be. And again, this outlier there kind of messes up what the line should be. So it's kind of useful to kind of graph it. It's also really easy to graph it. If you have your data already in, um, let me show you very, very quickly how to do that. So you have your CI calculator there. You have some sort of data in your, oh, well, this isn't probably very good, is it? Uh, maybe L1, L3? Oh, yeah, that'll work. L1, L3, nice. That's good. That's the way of doing it. Um, so stat, help, uh, stat, stat test, then reg T test. And I'm going to put in list one and list three. And then remember, you always leave this frequency as, as 1. You always leave this as not equal to, and you leave this one blank. <coughs> Calculate. And so then I get y equals a plus bx. Remember, right? a is 0 0.93, uh, 0.933, and my b is 0.133x. So if I want to graph these, again, you go to second stat plot, turn it on, 
Uh, make sure make sure your list is right. Yeah, and again, and then you're gonna take it on scatter plot, and then put your list in. You're gonna have L1 and L2. I happen to have L3 for my Y, so I'm gonna change that a little bit. And then if you go to zoom nine, it'll graph those. But now I want to graph my regression line also. So you guys see this little Y equals button here? You can look at your calculator and you can see it there. I want to type in, what do I want? I want 0.933 plus 0.133 X. The X, see this next to the green one? The little, it says XT... Uh, 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 and, and if you hit it once, it'll give you an X. And then... Um, is it on? Yeah, because you have plot one high about it. Okay, good. So then when I go to zoom nine, zoom nine, it'll give me the line there. Good deal? And that looks like that's pretty reasonable, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of between them and all that. Uh, well, but we really need more data points, because it also kind of looks like a parabola is somewhat reasonable. It does look like a parabola. Yeah, I mean, I imagine my... Uh, well, we just gave I imagine my R is not very good. I kind of went down, oops, stat. Test, Lynn Reg T test. My R probably sucks. Yeah, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.49. So it probably say there's a correlation to start off with. But if it was correlated, then you kind of get a sense from that. That's how you find, that's how you got that line easily, is you just go to Y equals and just type it in there. And then when you do zoom nine, it graphs your points and the line. Am I going to test you on the exam? No, but it's just good to know so you have kind of a fuller picture of things. And Martin's in here, so I really can't get away with not doing it. Okay. Sorry. No, it's all good. It took like two minutes. That's somewhat interesting, right? Yeah. So there you go. All right. So for you guys, we rejected H naught. So should we use y equals a, a plus bx or not? Yes. 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 So what is my a? Give it a. 0 0.019. 019. What do you get for b? 0.637. So you have y equals 0 0.019. Uh, what can we go over this place? 9. 3. 3. three. three yeah. Well, 4. We'll go. Is it 4? Uh, you want just uh, 0, 0.9347319. Oh, three. That's good. Yeah. Plus 0.637x. You might be off by one decimal. Six three seven one. Then that, because depending on how many sig figs you did somewhere else along the line, I don't know, but that should be uh, six three seven one. That's I'm I'm good with three sig figs. Uh, three six uh, six three seven zero six two nine three seven. I, I just need three sig figs. Oh, you just three? Okay. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. Zero. Uh, leading zero doesn't count, right? So um, so here place. we're gonna do. This and I want to predict for when x is what. Okay. So you have to look at. Um, you want to look at drug amount of drug. Is that my x or my y? X. My x. Everybody follow that. Yeah. So then that means my x should be 5.2. So when x is 5.2, what's my y? That's my question. What would I guess my y should be? So you're going to solve this. And you're going to get what? What did you guys get? 3.332. Great, so 3.3. Good? Mm -hmm. Great. If you want to put 3.33, that's fine also. 3.6 is totally fine with all that. Um, did you guys, do you guys need a minute to do problem number two, or are you guys ready to go? Oh, good. Good to go? Mm -hmm. Anybody want, want just another minute? Okay, so here we did not reject H naught. So can we use Y equals? No. Do you, everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. It's not a line. So instead, we want a thousand, 190,000 square feet in size. Is that my X or my Y? Talk to your neighbors. I'm not getting a very good response. X. Okay, so it's on my X or Y, guys. X. X. So when x is 190, I want to know what my y should be. What's my best guess for y? Y bar. Can I find y bar? Uh, do I have all my y's in a list for me already? No. Yes. Yes. 
you've typed them into it, well, you could type if you didn't type them into a list, and then do stat calc one bar stats on that list. Right? They'll call it X bar because it just calls everything X bar, but you know it's really Y's because you put the Y's in that list. Okay, so what did people get for that? Ramsey, what did you get? I got 134.7. 134.7. Good. Could you round up that case to a whole number? Um, no. You could. Yeah, if you put 135, I'm fine with that too. Okay. So I'm totally good. Yeah, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, do, let's just do three sig figs. 135. So in other words, if it was 13, then you do 13.5. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Three sig figs. So once you hit your first non zero, I need. Three dash, I need three um, places. First non zero, one, two, three. So this would be, you round to the nearest whole number there. Yeah? So what would we write for A since we don't have to do the equation? On that one, we wouldn't write A because it's sticking. Oh, right. If there is a significant limit cor correlation. Since there isn't, then you just don't do anything. Yeah? A, no significant correlation. Right. Basically. Yeah, it isn't. Because it says if. If there is, then you would. If there isn't, then you just don't do anything. Um, on the exam, I may ask for it anyways just to trick you and be, and be difficult. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I may ask you for your linear, linear um, regression line, but you wouldn't use it if there's no linear correlation. Everybody good? Or if you really want, you can say, don't need it because not correlated. And that'd be okay. I think I would take that as well. You have bonus points? No. Because <laughs> you haven't given me the A and the B. So it's just, you know, you're doing one work instead of another. Um, yeah. All right. So why don't you guys do lab problem six? So lab problem six is everything. It's your hypothesis test, starting with H0, H1, all the way through. And then predict for a hundred. So. It says 100 fires, but really I mean 100 whatever the fires are. Fires are in thousands. So really I really mean uh, 100,000. I want, I want X to be 100. That's what I'm saying.